Give the unit a bit of a clean over. Looking for any obvious damage to the unit. Let's see any damage to the port coils. Let's see any damage to the panels. I'm also going to check the state of the lagging. Make sure it's all good and it hasn't perished. Nice. Any obvious damage again. What I'm doing here is shining a torch through from the back here. You can see that light coming through. Let's give me a good idea of how clean that coil is. If you've got a lot of damage to the coil, you can use a fin comb. We're straightening these fins back up. It's important to keep that coil as clear as possible. Give it a bit of a clean. Low pressure washer here, just spray my way through. This may or may not be enough. If it's going to need more, then we're going to use a brush or a specific coil brush, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but also, it may need something more stronger, yeah, like a uh, Enviro coil or something like that, or another manufacturer's yeah. coil cleaners. Be no, careful no. which ones you use. If you're not too I'm sure, to give them a specific call. And the other thing to look there is look how the water's flowing out the bottom of the actual unit. This is an opportunity. To and look at the condensate drain side of things and where that water is actually flowing to. So we'll give it a bit more of a brush if it need be, so then I'm using a stiff brush here. But just to give you an idea, so get rid of any leaves and debris, anything you're going to think is actually going to start reducing that airflow. longer brush here, specifically a coil brush here, for getting deeper inside those coils if need be. It's not always going to be required, again that's why I like using a torch to give myself an idea. The other thing you can also do is we can actually check around the inside of the unit, so what I'm doing here is I'm looking for any obvious oil leaks or anything like that. If you've got an opportunity to get the covers off, have a little nose. 